All right, welcome back, my children. So while I've been away for the past month or so, I've been messing around with uh, Godot's inner audio system, trying to get um, a good enough understanding of how the system works and how we can use it to make like sounds within our game. So what I've been doing is, or what I'm going to show you how to do today, is how to get footstep sounds working on your ground. So as you see here, um, it will change depending on the sound type or the floor type, excuse me. I'm going to show you how to get some echoes into your feet, your footstep sounds. Let's say you were going down a tunnel or something like this. I'm going to show you how to have an enemy listen for the player. So as you can see here, um, he can't hear me as long as this blue ball is here. Um, that's just to represent a window. But if I take the window off and I run across this thing, you'll see that he now comes after me because he can now hear me. So let's just put that away. And this also works. So. If you can see here, there, that window right there is um, closed. But if I go to this one here, you can, whoops, you can see that he does, in fact, hear me. So it doesn't quite play the sound uh, fast enough. That's, that's more of a problem with my sound file than anything. Um, but yeah. And then after that, I'm going to show you how to see here, get that sound object over there to also uh, do like reverb if it's in a if it's in a tunnel, and how to get it to muffle if you are within like a wall or whatever, so or behind a wall or some something like that. So yeah. All right, I think that's everything I need to show. With that being said, oh uh, by the way, um, this scene that I have here was actually made um, in my last lesson. So if you want to figure out how to do this particular scene with the patrolling enemy and whatnot. Um, I'll leave a little marker here and then you can follow that video and then you can come back to this one. So yeah, all right, let's get started. So I'm gonna go down the line of the easiest thing to do and then I'll show you the more difficult stuff to do. So when it comes to the tunnel sound here, um, this is actually very easy. Um, all I did was I added two area 3Ds in here, one at the back and another one in the front. And I just called it deep echo and small echo. So the small echo is for when the player first enters this area. Um, they have a small little area where they, um, a small little area that um, just slow, just slightly alters their sound. And then as they go deeper, they'll hit the second collision and then it'll make it even, it will slowly progress it to the more deeper reverb. So this is actually pretty easy. All you're gonna do is go into your area 3D, add it, give it to collision shape, and then you're gonna see that there's two drop downs here called audio bus and audio reverb. Now, if you don't know what the buses are, um, it's just Godot's uh, sound management system, I guess you would call it. Um, this will allow you to add buses as well as effects to whatever it is that you're trying to do. And all we're doing with these things is we're just swapping over the default, which would be this, uh, the audio bus. This would be its default uh, bus, which usually is the master, but it could be something else if you want it to be. Um, just click on that to make sure that you can override it. And then the reverb bus is technically what we're gonna be changing the bus to. So it doesn't have to be the actual reverb bus. It can be anything you want it, as long as you have a bus for it. So, and then here we have the amount, which is the strength of the effect. So this is the deep one, yes. So this one is about 50% strength. And then the small one is pretty much the exact same thing, but it's just a little bit weaker. That way it doesn't sound quite as powerful. And then as you, like I said, as you go deeper into the tunnel, it becomes stronger. Um, and that's pretty much how that works. All it's really doing is just swapping between two audio buses, um, depending on the sound object. Now that sound object was attached to the player. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit later, but as you can see here, you can see I have footstep sounds and it's attached to a audio position, uh, no 3D. This isn't necessary. I forgot why I added this. Um, I think I was testing something else out and I just never, I never went back to change it, but that's not necessary. You just need the, um, the audio stream player 3D um, and it will, it, it will work. Um, I if I remember, yeah, because that, that actually uses position. Just make sure it's the uh, player 3D and not the, uh, excuse me, yeah, audio streamer player 3D and not just audio stream player. Um, this one this one takes into account sound, or uh, it's just, excuse me, takes into account um, position and distance, while the other one is just plays pure sound, doesn't matter where you're at, it's, it's always going to be at max volume. Okay, 
So now that that's done, or explained, or whatever, um, the next thing I'm gonna show you how to do, or the next thing that's actually simple to do, is the music or force. Force. Ah, we'll do the force. Why not? We're, we're here. So I don't know why I call this um, test window. It's not a window at all. I think it's just to test the window out, but this is just the floor itself. All I did was I created a mesh, uh, that way I can see what the floor is, and then I just gave it an area 3D and a collision shape. Now, I'm sure there's better ways to do it than this, but uh, this, this worked for me. Um, something to note though, I'll, I'll get to that later actually. Um, anyway, just, just know that that's what this is. It's a mesh, it's an area 3D, and then a collision shape. I added it to a group called floors, um, because later on we're going to look, let's get rid of that. We're gonna look for that group. And then if it is the group floors, we're gonna have it do something. And then I have a small little script in here. So inside the script, I have an export variable called ground type. And as you'll see here, if I click on the area 3D, I can type in any name that I want. So we can do something like LOL, for example. Now, this ground type string needs to match one of these in your dictionary. As you can see here, I have a dictionary called sound emitter. I'm just gonna put this back to marble. And what this is gonna do is, depending on the ground type, it's gonna grab one of these numbers. And this number is gonna be the sound level of the, the sound, yeah, the sound level of the floor that we, we stepped on. So grass and carpet and dirt, pretty, pretty much silent. Stone and wood, a little bit louder. A puddle of water and snow, even louder. And then things like metal, marble, and gravel are extremely loud. Then after that, we're just gonna go to, I, this actually isn't necessary anymore. Pass. You can, you can add it to the group uh, during the ready function if you want, but I just added it using the built-in node groups. Uh, so that's why that's not necessary. And then here I have two functions. One, I have the get ground type, uh, and that's gonna return the ground type. This is uh, when it gets called, um, it's gonna, it's gonna give back a variable of whatever this ground type was, and then we're gonna use that variable to find out the sound level. And then here we have send sound, and this here is going to have the sound emitter send the ground type. So this is gonna be the actual sound uh, number itself, like how loud it is. Uh, don't worry about this just yet. You're gonna see how these, these are going to function. Just know that this is how I have it set up in the floor. Um, so All right, so I was watching over the uh, the last video that I just made, and I'm gonna edit it later, but I noticed I'm, I forgot a couple of things. Um, one, um, let's just go to that right now. Um, I don't know where I'm gonna stick this, but um, probably right where <laughs> they're relevant. Um, with the test floors, or the floors doing it this way, um, I was gonna mention, but I completely forgot to mention this, uh, this doesn't work with grid, grid maps. Um, I don't know how to get them to work. Um, with grid map maps, uh, what you're going to have to do is essentially make a scene with a floor, um, give it all of the nice little scripty scripts, and then, um, what is this? Instantiate them into the scene and use them that way. So, for example, you know, you just thing here. So we had to do something like this. So it's just something to note on that that end. Um, again, this just does not work with the. Uh, the grid maps. I tried, I could not do it. Um, so yeah, since I was talking about the player, I might as well go there now. So let's see where we at on what was added and what it was not. Okay, so let's go down here. There's all the things that I added, correct? Yes, okay. So on the player, I, I already showed you the footstep sound, but I also needed a noise emitter assuming not, not a noise emitter, I needed the floor detector, excuse me. Um, this floor detector is just a collision shape as well. Um, once it collides in with the group that we specified, as you see it right here, uh, that's gonna be floor. So whenever it, it collides with the group of floors, it's gonna do something. So in the script here, I have, uh, a, I created a variable called areas, uh, and then I'd used it to get the floor ID. And all the floor ID is, is just a on ready variable uh, that gets the floor detector right when we start. So that's all that's doing right there. And then it's gonna get the overlapping areas. So this is gonna be called every single frame um, because it's, 
close this down and close this down because I have it here, check floor, within the physics process. But you can always use like a timer or something to help optimize it. I just did this. Um, I'm just having it checked every single frame because um, sometimes it wouldn't register when the floor was being changed or not. So this just eliminated that problem. But anyway, um, once we have this variable and it's getting through all of the overlapping areas, it's going to create a list. So we want to go through that list. Um, so we do a for loop. So we have for loop, area, and areas. You can call this whatever you want, the area. In fact, you can call this x if you like, and it will work just fine. There we go, just to limit confusion. Um, so this is just going to be the variable within the areas. And all it's saying is if the area is in a group of floors and we are on the floor, meaning we're not jumping or we're not falling, um, it's going to get the ground type. No, it's going to get the variable ground sound type, which we have a variable here for it. It's zero uh, by default. And this is going to tell um, Godot which type of floor that we're actually touching. And then we're going to get the noise level, which was which I said before. And the floor is the actual sound that it's making or the loudness of that sound. Now, I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, um, this noise level will be called somewhere else. Ah, here it is. Get current noise level. Yeah, this is going to be sent to the... Uh, the window and the enemy at some point. So that's what, again, that's what it's for. It even says right here, sounds, send sound level to the enemy. And this just gets the sound effect. Okay, I was, I was getting myself confused here. So yeah, this here gets the uh, sound effect sound and this is just gonna get the noise level. So that's all that's for. Then after that, we are going to get the walk sound. Now the walk sound is being called up here. Now I'll, you can actually call this within an animation player, um, depending on uh, when your player's foot hits the ground. I just created a timer uh, because I was lazy and I didn't want to futz with the animation player. But if you want to do go down that right, you can add an animation player. And when you're adding tracks and stuff, you would use the call method. And that call method would be this particular function that you're trying to call. But anyway, so this thing here is going to be call every time uh, half a frame is sent and we're moving and then it's going to get the sound number now this sound number is another variable up here it needs to be set to one by default because what this is actually going to be used for is it's going to go into our sound files and it's going to be looking for which file that's going to be grabbing so as you can see here in player sounds i have two set up for marble and stone and then wave one two three and four for that and this one also has wave one two three four five six and seven? No, just just one through six. And that's going to be the uh, the sound that it's it's grabbing from. So if you look down here, we have a get sound function and a current step. This current step is whatever the sound number is going to be. Will only play footsteps sound if it's on the ground. Yeah, okay, that's what this is for. So I have, um, if it's on floor, this is just to make sure that um, if we're jumping or we're falling and we're moving forward, we don't have footstep sounds uh, playing. Okay, so this thing is a bit confusing, but essentially what I'm using is an F string to grab a sound file. So at this point, we should have what the type is and we should have what the name of the sound file is. So what we'll do here is we're going to create a variable called sound file, or sound path, excuse me, and it's going to look through our resources here. So it's getting a path to a type, and then it's going to get whatever that number is. So f strings, the way they work is if they see a bracket like this, they know that this is going to be a variable that's going to be changed later in the future. As you can see, I have two of them. So this is going to be the type which would be either marble or stone. So if you remember, the ground types are being sent are being sent to our variable ground type. And we're going to grab that later, as you can see down here. And then we also have a number. So once we have whatever, t um, whatever type of ground we're on, it's going to grab one of these sound effects. So you know, one, two, three, or four. Or in this case, with stone, if let's say it was stone, it would grab one through six. 
Um, I think I actually have everything set to one to four though, but that's that doesn't matter. But anyway, once you have um, these set up here, you're going to use another variable called get sound, and then you're going to find the sound path, which was this variable up here, and then you're going to format it. This is going to insert the variables that we're looking for. So these names need to match what names are within the bracket. So the first thing we want is the type, which is going to be the ground sound type. So let's say we're walking on stone, it's going to find the file of stone. And then after that, it's going to find what current step we're on, which is the sound number. And then after that, it's going to get the foot sound, which is, where is this foot sound? Oh, I know what the foot sound is. It's uh, the audio player here. I have a variable called um, audio position footstep sounds. So that's that's what that is. And all it's saying is uh, get that audio streamer, get the stream function. I want you to load get sound. So in this case, it's, it's now it's loading whatever whatever ground we're stepping on, and one of those random files within there. That way, um, it doesn't have just one sound effect. Where it gives some variation within the footsteps, and that that I want you to play that sound file that you found, and that's all that's doing. Now, in order for us to get the current step or the sound number, which is up here, I do have a variable that's being called right here. Every time the sound is played and finished, it's going to go and grab a brand new number. So this is done, as you can see here, I have a little marker that just tells me that was it's, it has a signal here. So if you go into the player here, and you touch on it, or, or you click on its uh, audio player here, or its audio streamer, you will see within signals, it has a finished um, signal here. All you do is connect, like so find the script that you want it to connect to and then hit connect and then that should appear whoops within your new script now this one should be within the player script just just to note and then anytime it finishes it's just going to grab a random number from one to four so all that's saying is when this thing is called find the ground type and then go into that file and randomly pick uh, either one, two, three, or four, and then send it back as the sound number. And that's how we get our different sounds for our foot. Okay, and then finally after that, we're gonna get the current noise level. Um, this, if I'm not mistaken, is gonna be called by the enemy and the window slash door. And whatever noise level has been returned, that's gonna be given off to the enemy. And if it's over within that threshold, um, the enemy will either stay put or it will pursue the player. Okay. I hope all of this is making sense. Okay, yeah, let's do Windows. <laughs> let's do Windows. Okay, so the way this is going to work is I have a little ball here. Um, this just was going to represent either a window or a door. This was just so I can see it. Um, all I did was give it a node 3D. Excuse me. Then I gave it an area, an area 3D and a collision shape. This is a noise collector. Um, I don't remember exactly what this was for, to be perfectly honest. Give me one second. Now, okay, so that's what that's what this is doing. So this noise collector, all it's doing is checking if the player is within this bounding box. And if they are, we know that the player is within earshot of the window, not the enemy, just the window. And if they are within earshot of the window, then the window is going to start collecting data or collecting sound from the player. So as you can see here, I have a noise collector. I have a body entered and a body exit. These things here are going to just check to see if, 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 if it is the player. And I have a variable here that is going to turn on or off, depending. So here in the static body 3D. Why is it a static body 3D? Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Um, this is not within the noise collector. This is actually within the collider object, but that's okay, it doesn't matter. Um, as you can see here, I have a variable here called uh, player in room. It's gonna be equal to false by default. Uh, and then if the player ever enters 
that uh, collider type, then it's going to be true. And if it leaves, it goes false. So that's all that's doing is just making sure that if the player is there, it, it can collect its data. Then after that, I have another variable called is open. Um, this is just to see if the window is open or closed. If it's open, sound can go through. If it's closed, no sound goes, gets through it at all. Um, you can always muffle the sound as well. You can make the sound, let's say, uh, when you're sw swapping over variables, you can reduce the, the number of variables by just using simple math. Like, I don't know, if uh, the window's closed and the sound is five, you know, minus two, and then, you know, you can go from there. Um, here is the receive sound. Um, this is, I believe, the actual noise amount, if I'm not mistaken. And then these two here, um, I will explain in a minute. So the way I have this set up, is I have a way to open and close the window with a function or a key press, which is not that important. All it's just gonna do is toggle between um, on or off. So let's say we have our window set up and we want it to check if the player, um, if the player can be heard or not, or we want the window to collect sound from the player. So the way I actually have this set up is as follows. We are going to use what's called intersecting rays or an intersect ray. And all it's going to do is it's going to, it's a lot like a ray cast. It's going to have a point, um, a starting point, and then it's going to have an end point. And whatever the heck it's colliding with, it can grab data from. So let's just say that the player is in the room and the window is open. What we want to do is create a uh, we want to create a variable, and that variable is going to have this function called get world 3D and the direct space date. All this is going to do is activate. There we go. It's just going to return the current world that we're we're in, and the 3D node is registered to. So wherever wherever this um, node is, that's yeah wherever this node is that's where it's going to be activated then after that we're going to use a variable called query which i have up here it's set to null um, i have it set up here is so i can i can grab it from other functions without having to pass any variables and after that we're just going to do physics ray query parameters 3d we want to create and then what we're going to do is well we really shouldn't do get parent we should do something else but um, this is just easy, so I'm just going to use it. Uh, we want to get parent of the node that we're off, which should be the sound tunnel. We want to get its global position, and then we want to get the player's uh, current position. Now, this global variable was already created in the last video, so I'm not going to go over that. Um, and then after that, we're going to create one more variable called result space state, which is this right here. And then we're going to get the intersect ray. And that intersect ray is going to be looking for what data the query has gathered. So all this is doing is within the 3D space, it's creating um, a line, essentially an invisible line that you can't see even even with the debug option. It's going to create it from two points. In this particular case, it's going to create it from the um, sound tunnel, uh, the sound tunnel's node 3D, and it's going to create it to the player, and it's going to constantly follow the player. And if it's colliding with something, so right here. If the results are not empty, meaning it's colliding with something, we're going to look for what that result is. So if the results collider, this, um, I guess I should explain uh, why we're getting this collider here. Here, um, whenever the uh, intersect array collides with something, it actually returns back a dictionary, if I'm not mistaken. Da, da, da. Yeah, right there. It has a dictionary. And within that dictionary, it has a bunch of keys that we can uh, we can look up. Uh, the one that we want really is just the collider. This will find any colliding object and grab data from it. Um, the rest I did not use, so we are just going to ignore them. They don't exist. But anyway, that's that's why we're doing this. So this result now is um, all this crap here, and all we want is the collider, like I said. So if it's not empty, meaning it's colliding with something, we want to get the result of the collider, and we want to make sure that it's in the play the group of player. So that just lets it know that um, if it's if it's if it's the player that we that we're honing in on, we want to receive sound, and that sound is going to be um, the collider, and then it's going to find the function get noise level or current noise level, and that received sound, if you remember, is right here. So 
this is just grabbing the sound from the player and it's sending it to the window, which is where we're at right now. So now that it's within this script, we can actually pass that off to the enemy and then the enemy can find out if the sound is loud enough for it to hear the player or not. Um, again, this is only gonna work if the window is open and if the window is closed, then it, this, this code will never be ran. Um, you can always change this to like, you know, if the window's open, do this, but if the window is not open, you know, the window's closed, then it can, you know, reduce sound, for example. So you can do something like this, get current sound minus three. All right. I don't remember where I was at. I just got interrupted. Um, so, uh, yeah, so if the window is closed, then you can, you know, reduce the sound or whatever. And that takes care of that. So that's how the window is, is working here. Don't think I missed anything. Um, this is this uh, current noise level right here is just going to be passed over to the enemy, and I think that is all. Um, by the way, these functions need to be ran in the process or physics process. That way, they are checked. Um, but yeah, so I think that ends that. Um, something to note, though, um, the reason why I'm using a collision, as you see here, I have a collision shape. Um, you're going to have to put this on a different layer. That way the player can't run into it. So I put it on layer 16. Um, the reason why I used a, a collider instead of a instead of a um, area is this intersect ray doesn't work with area 3Ds for whatever reason. It just can't collide with them. So you need you need to use a collider for this. Um, that is about it on that though. So just something to note. Um, that's why I use that. Okay, now now that's done. Let's go to the enemy here and start working on this because this guy is an absolute disaster. I definitely need to go and clean up his code because this is no bueno. Look at this crap. <laughs> okay, so for the enemy. For the enemy, I just added one thing to it. Um, that is the ear. And all the ear is is a collision shape that allows it to detect whether or not it's hearing the player or if it's listening to the window. So whenever the player or the window are within its range, it just creates an intersect ray, just like we did with the, uh, the window, to either the window or the player. And then it it's going to look for the sound levels. Now, something an intersect ray. So as you can see here, we're going to have a function called check for sound. Uh, sounds heard. So right here, it's going to get the ear. And it's going to be overlapping bodies. This is very similar to the window. And it's going to look through the the sound. Now, all we're going to do is create another variable called player player noise. And that's going to be equal to s dot current noise level. So all it's going to say is it's looking for the area. So the area that it finds is just, it wants its current um, noise level. And this noise level is in both the player and it's in both the, it's both the player and the window. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter which one it's calling. It's gonna, that's the uh, sound it's gonna be looking for. Then here, um, if the player is close, it's just giving it a, an extra, an extra digit to its um, sound. That way it's easier for the enemy to hear. This isn't really necessary. You don't need to do this. Um, I just did it so if the player was close by, um, even if there was a wall in the way, um, it could, the player would, excuse me, the enemy would still hear the player. And then um, once it has the uh, player noise and it passes in that variable to the listen to player, which is down here, this is where that weird magic happens. So this is doing the exact same thing as the window. It's just creating a array from the from the enemy to the player, and then it's going to find out um, if it's colliding with the player or not. So if it's colliding with the player, it's going to find out what the player group uh, not find out what the player's group is, but it's going to check what the player's sound is, and if the player's sound or player noise is greater than than or equal to five, then it's gonna chase the player. If it's not colliding with the player, this is gonna tell it that it's colliding with a wall. And then, um, 
or it's colliding with some some type of object like it doesn't even matter if it's a pipe or a pole or even a bottle if it's colliding with anything it's going to reduce the sound of that so i just create a new variable which has player noise minus three and then if sound to wall is greater than or equal to five it also pursues the player um, that's why when i was playing earlier um, when you saw that i was running back and forth with the uh yeah but yeah i'll show you so I saw earlier. So right now, um, I actually with am within the earshot of this enemy, but because the ray right now is is actually going through this wall, it can't hear me because it's only probably at like a level of two or something. But when I get rid of this um, window, or better yet, I don't even need that. But if I go over here, because there's no wall uh, in the way, he hears me just fine. So. That's uh, essentially what these two things are doing. So these are pretty much exactly identical um, to the window. So I'm not going to spend too much time with that. And then here, um, this right here just gets a sh arrow. God damn it. This right here, the check doors and check windows. All it's doing is if there's ever a window, as you, you'll see here, if there's ever a window or a door added to the, not add it, if it ever collides with a door or a window group, it's going to create a ray, an intersect ray um, from the enemy to the window. That way it can get, grab data from that. And again, it's doing the exact same thing. All it's doing is here within the ear, within the ear area 3D, it's getting overlapping areas. So here you can see it says finds windows and doors and connects to them. If the door window, which is what DW stands for, is in group sound tunnel area, which is this sound tunnel here, which is what I called it. If it's within this area here, whoops, um, just create a an array that connects from the enemy to that area or to that window. And then at that, find out the current noise level. So here you see noise trigger for pursuit. It's going to find um, the current noise level of whatever it's colliding with. So either that be the window or the player. And then here, if the noise level again is over five, then the pursuit is true. Fixes a bug when the player walks on a loud server. So if the enemy is near a window, pursuit state is never triggered. Found enemy never looks for window collider, only player. Okay, okay, okay. There was a, okay, so I did fix that bug. I guess I can get rid of this actually. Oh, but yeah, I'll leave it there. And that is that. Okay, so once you're done setting up your noise emitter, the enemy's ear, and the sound tunnel's noise collector area, you need to make sure that they're all set to layer nine, collision layer nine. Um, this is so that they can pass information to each other. Um, they need to be able to collide with each other, but they also need to ignore any other areas that are within the scene. So giving them their own la little layer, that way they can pass information to each other and ignore the rest is uh, it's pretty useful. So just making sure that I, I mentioned that. So if you can't get any sound to pass by each other, that's, that's why they're probably not on the same layer. Okay, let's go back to what I was doing before. I don't know if any of this was super confusing, um, but if it is, yeah, this is pretty complicated stuff, to be perfectly honest with you. It took me, I think, two and a half weeks, maybe three, to figure this out. Um, oh, by the way, the check sound and check doors and windows, both of those are being called within the physics processor, so it is being called every single frame. Again, you can optimize this using timers instead, but um, yeah. But anyway, yeah, this stuff was actually pretty complicated. I was bashing my face against the wall trying to figure this crap out, but I finally got something that works. Now, this isn't perfect. Um, there's definitely much, much improvement that can be had here. Um, for example, um, the music position here. I don't know why, but sometimes when you put a music within the reverberation of the walls, it cracks a lot. So I had to, as you, I mean, as you saw, I had to literally just put key presses in here in order for it to to do what I wanted it to do but you can use this for triggers like I said earlier or I don't remember if I said that I... 
I don't think I, I went over this, but it's the same thing. Um, if it ever collides with anything with the, the Ray, just switch the audio to muffle. And that's the end of that. It needs to be reset, um, by the way. Needs a function or needs a way to reset bus. Put that there. But um, yeah. And uh, oh, this thing here is just to loop the music. But yeah, this, like I said, not perfect, but it does in fact work. Um, if you want to have like a, maybe a search state, um, you can always add something like that to this. Uh, but yeah, all this code will be available um, down in the description so you can fiddle around with it. If you find a better method, um, then by all means, um, yeah, by all means, you know, go ahead and do it. Or by, by all means, use it. Or share it with me. <laughs> I, I am more than welcome to uh, steal your code to make my games better. <laughs> all right, my children. So until next time, farewell.